Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. This is going to be Chapter 6 of the Commentary on the Book of Zechariah. So, Zechariah, Chapter 6 and Verse 1. And I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. Now, sometimes when they're talking about mountains, they're talking about mountains, you know, like Mount Everest. Sometimes when they're talking about mountains, they're talking about kingdoms. I'm not exactly sure in this particular instance. It could be literal or it could be a figure of speech. And the mountains were mountains of brass. Now, I wasn't sure about exactly what brass has to do with anything. So I looked it up, and the first instance, usually the first time that something appears in the King James Bible, gives you an indication of the meaning of what it is. Well, the first time the word brass and iron appears in Genesis is in chapter 4, and it's giving the lineage, the seed line of Cain. Hmm. So in verse 22, Genesis 4 in verse 22, and Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. An instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. So this one is much, much more than just a blacksmith. This one, uh, an artificer, I mean, the first three letters is art. So this one not only makes, you know, is an instructor to those that make, bra you know, things of iron and brass, but, you know, skillful, skillful creations, not just a blacksmith making a horseshoe, you know. And Zilla, she also bear two ball cane, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Now, you know what I find interesting? Now, this is the first time that iron and brass are mentioned in the Bible. According to Legends of Japan, uh, they were taught how to make steel swords by the gods, plural, G-O-D-S, gods, plural, that came down from heaven and uh, they taught them to take, uh, Japan has sand, iron sand, and uh, on one of their shores, and you, they would take that and put it in a smelter, a covered area, blow, and put a lot of... Uh, fire under it and then blow air into it to heat it up and then it, it's covered to retain the heat to build the heat up and then you got to build up the heat to where it, it will melt the iron sand and then they take it out and uh, then they pound on it with a hammer to separate the iron from the other things like you know maybe nickel or copper or whatever uh, other metals are mixed in with it, and uh, and then they were taught from what I, from what their own legends that uh, they take carbon, which is uh, if you've ever seen uh, well charcoal and coal that's carbon, and they would take that and mix it in with the iron, and then it turns that into steel. Now, steel, 
from what I understand, is 10 times stronger than iron by itself. Uh, ladies, those, those of you that have cooked with uh, iron skillets, you drop them on the uh, concrete and they'll, they'll shatter. But uh, you get steel, a steel uh, pot or pan or whatever, that's not, you could drop it and it's not going to shatter. And it weighs a lot less. It's stronger and weighs a lot less. So, you know, eh, just a little something about iron and brass. Tied in with the descendants of Cain. Very, uh, for those of you old folks that uh, used to watch Laugh-In, Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, what was it, Artie used to say, very interesting. Or maybe not. Verse 2. All right, so the four chariots came out from between the two mountains, uh, and the mountains were mountains of brass. Verse 2. In the first chariot were red horses. Okay? I just did a Bible study on red. And in the second chariot, black horses. And in the third chariot, white horses. Oh, that's racist, right? And in the fourth chariot, gristled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my Lord? You know, what, what in the world? You got red, you got black, you got white, and then you got uh, gristled and bay horses. What's up with that? What are these, my Lord? Verse 5. And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of, he of the heavens. These are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. Huh. Verse 6, the black horses which are therein go forth into the north country. Okay. Uh, and the white go forth after them. And the gristle go forth toward the south country. And the bay went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walk to and fro through the earth. He cried, uh, then cried he uh, upon me and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. All right, now, where else do we read about these, horse, these horses with different colors? Well, if you guessed Revelation, the book of Revelation, which means to reveal, you'd be right. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Ah, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went another horse that was red, red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Oh boy, that's what communism did, right? Uh, but I'm not saying this is communism, I'm just pointing that out, because communism's color is red. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sh sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Verse 5, And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances, in his hand, in his hand, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, 
a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now, from what I understand, a measure of wheat is about what, you know, like a loaf of bread. And a penny was the day's wages back back then. That was a day's wage for a unskilled laborer. So can you imagine having to work all day just for a loaf of bread? And three measures of barley for a penny. Well, barley is cheaper than wheat. Um, people don't generally eat barley. Um, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. And his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given over, over, unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. You know, it's interesting. Uh, if you read that in Revelation, but you'd never read Zechariah, you would know that in Zechariah 6 and verse 5, it says, and the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. We would know that, right? So the Bible interprets the Bible. All right, verse, let's skip Zechariah chapter 6 and go to verse 9, where we left off. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Take of them of the captivity. Uh, remember, uh, the Babylonians took Judah captive. And Zechariah was one of the prophets after the captivity was over when the Medes and the Persians, modern-day Iranians, I guess, um, conquered Babylon and allowed the Hebrews, true Judah, to return to Jerusalem. It says, Take of them of the captivity, even of Heldai, of Tobijah, and of Jedediah, which are come from Babylon, and come thou the same day, and go into the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah. Uh, Josiah, if it's the same Josiah I'm thinking about, uh, Josiah was one of the was a good king of Judah. He was a good king, and he was uh, not long before Babylon conquered Judah, but he was a good king. Matter of fact, I'm I want to meet him one day. All right, verse eleven. Then take silver and gold, and make crowns, and set them upon the head of Joshua, the son of. Josedek the high priest, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of this place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Now remember we a previous study we talked about the branch, but here it's mentioned again. Verse thirteen. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. And the crown shall be to Helam, and to Tobijah, and to Zediah, and to Hen the son of Zephaniah, for a memorial in the temple of the Lord." And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass, and this shall come to pass, if, if ye will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. 
All right, people, that is the end of Zechariah chapter 6. Commentary by Chaplain Bob Walker. Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In His precious name, amen.